My name is Ian Skelly, and I'm a missionographer. I have traveled all over the world documenting the lives of missionaries. I've heard their amazing stories of faith and adventure. They are people who would dare to trust God and witness the impossible. Here are some of their stories. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Missionary Stories, and I've got some great friends here, Bob and Melissa Hill, missionaries uh, to Scotland. And uh, they're here with us. We're at uh, Camp Baldwin and uh, just got through doing some uh, uh, zip lining and uh, <laughs> obstacle, obstacle courses. courses. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to sit down with you guys and find out a little bit more about your story. Okay. Uh, I guess let me start off by asking how did you guys get started uh, in mission work? We've been uh, missionaries for 32 years. We're currently 22 years in Scotland, and uh, we were 10 years in Japan before that. And I guess we got started, we were both in a little Presbyterian church in Mississippi. I was in uh, uh, the military, and uh, we had some guest speakers come in uh, from Africa, and they told about their story of missionaries, and, and uh, at the end, they kind of gave like a altar call for people who wanted to be prayed for to think about going on mission. And so we, we both went forward, and then I went to work the next day, and uh, uh, on the base, and my best friend and I were uh, we we worked together, and so I was talking to him about this, and I said, "Look, you know, I really believe we're supposed to get out of the Air Force and go on uh, and go someplace as missionaries." And, uh, and he says, "Okay, well, let's pray." So so we prayed, and I prayed a really interesting prayer. I, I said, "Lord, if this is you, you need to tell Melissa, because if I say we're going to do this, she'll say okay, uh, but I want you." to tell her, uh, I don't want to have to say anything. And so we said, amen, she came to pick me up. And as uh, as we were driving out of the parking lot there at Keesler, uh, she says, Bob, I was at this uh, this uh, tea with Nail Chin Chin. And, uh, and she uh, talked about going on the mission field. I think we're supposed to get out of the Air Force and go on the mission field. <laughs> and I said, it was just like, yay, yeah, hallelujah. Right. And so that's really how we got started when we going to Liberty Bible College in Pensacola and graduated with a bachelor's and then a master's there. And then, uh, so we went to Japan yeah. for almost 10 years. While, while we were in um, Bible College, we had the opportunity to go to, on a mission trip, a short-term mission trip, mm to uh, Mexico and I loved it. It was a great experience uh, seeing how the missionaries work together and how their children function on the mission fields and that was all good but it taught me two things at that point. I was definitely called to be a missionary and it was not just to Mexico. <laughs> so we went back to Bible College and God led us to Japan and I loved Japan. I thought it was, if really fit my personality. It's very structured, kind of ducks in a row um, kind of lifestyle. And I loved it. My children loved it. It was a very safe place to raise our kids. Yeah, Japan was, uh, I mean, Melissa loved it. I was determined that I was going to, uh, that we were missionaries for life. And about <laughs> seven years into our time in Japan, I was starting to pray that I would die sooner than later. <laughs> Because I wasn't quitting, <laughs> and uh, but it was really hard for me because I'm a real relational person, and and uh, it's really really hard to build deep relationships there, and and uh, there was a big, uh, real competitive kind of spirit among missionaries, and so it was just a very difficult place for me. I mean, we saw a lot of good stuff happen there, a lot of people saved, and two churches started, and but uh, you know I was really. Uh, ready to leave yeah. two years before we we did leave and yeah. and uh and, and god really helped us with that uh i you know i hadn't planned on leaving yeah. but uh uh god just like he took the i mean it's like he he said you can leave now mm -hmm. uh after i had a call with another missionary in thailand who was going to go to the philippines to work in a ministry and he said he said, you know, you should think about going to London. And so uh, I put the phone down. By the time I walked from our bedroom to the kitchen where Melissa was, it's like the Lord had said, you're done here. Mm -hmm. And so I said, how would you like to go to London? She goes, when do we go? Mm -hmm. And we actually, uh, it, was, it was just that quick. 
and then uh, we we were getting ready to go to London and that just totally fell through and so it, it's like the Lord asked us well where would you like to go and so we, we both really just had a thing about Scotland and so we said well we'd like to go to Scotland and so God just opened up an amazing door with that and when we went to Scotland um, we went on, kind of on a fact-finding tour of Scotland for a couple of weeks and um, we were in Glasgow near Glasgow in this little town called Clydebank and it was raining it was bad weather the whole time it's freezing cold it was miserable but they took us into Glasgow and laughingly this this uh, uh, band was playing The Eyes of Texas Are Upon You. Well, we're from Texas. Yeah. So I laughingly said, Bob, this is a sign, we're coming here. Yeah. But then we were going to a couple other places to check them out. And we went up to visit some friends who've been missionaries in Scotland for years and years and years. And one of them came up to us and said, where are you going? Are you gonna to go to Edinburgh? Or are you gonna to go to uh, Clyde Bank? And I said, well, I really feel God is calling us to Clyde Bank. And this man is very prophetic. And he said, well, just stop praying because that's where you're going. And it was one of those aha moments. Yeah. Within two minutes, the guy, the pastor of the little church in uh, Clyde Bank called and said, Bob, my people want to know, are you coming to be with them or are you going somewhere else? So we had to say we're going to them. Yeah, it was really funny yeah. because Steve asked me first and I'm going like, well, you know, Clyde Bank's really good. <laughs> Edinburgh's really good. And, you know, so I'm typical me, you know, I'm just trying to fi fi figure it out. And Melissa goes, he, Steve turns to Melissa and goes, Melissa, what's the Lord saying? She goes, Clyde Bank, he goes, stop praying, that's where you're going. <laughs> and so, and sure enough, I mean, uh, 22 years later, yeah. and uh, it has been, it's been a remarkable yeah. uh, time there in, in Scotland, stuff we didn't expect. Let me ask you guys, what is one of the most challenging things, because we all have our ups and downs, uh, that you guys have had to go through on the field? All right, when we went to Scotland, um, we had no idea what was going on. We just thought we were going to work in a little church, and we didn't understand the housing situation in Scotland either. So people in our church were trying to get us moved into Clyde Bank, and we were like, oh, that's great, that's where we want to live. Well, they took us into this uh, an apartment and it, the apartment was painted black and had all kinds of stuff on the floor. It was disgusting. And we walked out there, we both just started crying and like, <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing? We had no idea. So we stayed where we were for a few more months. And I kept saying, I really like this apartment that's right there. It's on the same street, same I, building. Actually right next door. Yeah, and I was like, I really want that one. God gave it to us. It was awesome. But what we didn't know was that the drug dealer lived right below us. And things were going along okay until one day on the way to church, the brake lines went out of my car. Brakes, yeah. The brakes went out of my car. And um, I went and got them fixed, and that was fine. But then the very next Sunday, the brakes went out of my car again. So I went back to the car dealer and I said, well, you know, this is two weeks in a row, what's going on? And the guy said, Mrs. Hill, I don't know how to tell you this, but somebody's cutting your brake lines. You need to go to the police. I was like, okay. And I was in Germany. And Bob was in Germany, I'm yeah. doing this on my own. So I went to the police department and the police said, look, we don't go on your street. <laughs> we don't go anywhere near that place. It's just too dangerous. And they said, uh, you just need to go to the drug dealer and ask him what's going on. And I was like, Okay, this is not my culture. And so I did. Uh, Bob's away, and I just went to the drug dealer downstairs. I knocked on the door. He came to the door in his underpants. Like always. Like always. <laughs> and I said, look, somebody's cutting my brake lines on my car, and I'm taking your children to church with me on Sunday morning. Do you know anybody that would do that? And he said, no, I don't, but I'll check into it. It never, ever happened again after yeah. that. And then the drug dealer put some cameras up to look after our dairy. He came, became like the godfather to us. He protected us. Nothing was going to happen to us ever again. So this bad thing turned into a really good thing. That's true. And I just loved, I loved that man, yeah. drug dealer and all. I yeah. loved him. He was a yeah. great guy. Yeah, that, I mean, that's where the Lord really spoke to us that uh, you can't love what you judge. Yeah. You know, and so we, we just began to see people as people. And uh, uh, God opened up that whole community. Yeah. We, we went and started Scotland's first uh, police sanctioned citizens patrol and we had the second second highest crime in our county 
and we we began to patrol every night from 10 at night to 1 in the morning every man in my in my neighborhood had been in prison and uh, uh, so we would walk and they would uh, the guys in either end of the street in in the top flats would walkie talk with walkie talkies would tell us where the gangs were and we'd just walk them out and so that that one year mm -hmm. we went from the second highest crime to the lowest and uh, and God just opened up amazing doors uh, to reach into people's lives. We we were uh, if you know the health center was like 50 yards away, and if their kids were sick or something was wrong, they would come to us before they would go to the health center and uh, have us pray for them before they went. And babies were born. They want us to come over and bless their babies. And uh, if there was a you know fight between. Uh, couple then their kids would come and get get us and say oh and here you come help my parents you know so we found ourselves doing stuff that we really didn't think we'd be doing yeah and it, it wasn't always easy either because mm. we had uh, bricks through our windows yeah. and people would threaten Bob's life mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't easy yeah. and we there was times he'd be out on these patrols and I wonder you know God are you gonna protect him is he gonna come back in of course he always did yeah, thankfully <laughs> yeah but uh, it was it was tough times. But like you said, we well we didn't. But God really turned the neighborhood around. Yeah. We went from about 80% um, unemployed. unemployed to everybody was getting a job and they were moving out of the neighborhood. Yeah. It was it was an amazing time. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, I mean to this day that uh, those are still our friends and we, we still contact them and stuff. And they've torn the neighborhood down and built single family dwellings there. But. Uh, those were amazing years, yeah. and God, God just did stuff that we were just so amazed at, and just opened doors. And yeah. and uh, I remember we we had a big street party, and uh, the uh, and we had a, a church from North Carolina come out and they brought a Christian singer a guy named Jim Cole, and and so we had it all set up. And one of my neighbors goes, Bob, you got your permit? And I'm going like, permit. He goes, yeah, you got to have permits. So I said, oh, man. So I went down to the police station, and they said, what are you here for? I said, I need a permit. And they go, okay, we'll fill out this paperwork, and in about two weeks, we'll, we'll get back with you. I said, no, 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 I'm doing this today. And they're going like, you can't do that. I said, well, what will happen if we just do it? They, well, if people complain, we'll just have to shut you down. I said, well, then just come slowly. And so they, uh, and so sure enough, we went out. We had this great time. People in my neighborhood who had never spoken to each other, who hated each other, were sitting, drinking their beer, and singing, "Won't you humble yourself as a little child?" And uh, and we were just wrapping up, and the police cruiser pulls up, and I came out, and and I said, "Did you have a complaint?" He says, "Yeah, but we came slowly." <laughs> and so we, uh, and that really broke the whole community open yeah. there. And we we just. Uh, uh, it was just an amazing time. And so for us, that was what community was. You know, we were welcome in everybody's houses and they were welcome in ours. And, uh, you know, the guy that taught my son the guitar was multiple murderer. And, uh, but, but, but they loved us, you know, and we loved them. And uh, it, was, it, it was an amazing, amazing time in the Lord. Yeah. God had a purpose in it. Yeah. He had a purpose for us. Yeah to learn how to love people and not yeah. judge people and yeah. to learn how to, to, to work with people that are more difficult than people that we weren't used to. And now it's like, take me back there, God, I'll do it again. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, I think too, uh, one, one of the things that was really difficult was, was dealing with our, uh, our older daughter and uh, she was back in Texas and uh, she ended up getting pregnant and almost killed by this guy and they had to have her in a, uh, protective custody and it was really, I, I mean for us it was a real low point. We found yeah. that she called us on our 25th wedding anniversary right as we were going out to a big neighborhood uh, celebration and it was devastating to us. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, God, you know, how can this happen? And, you know, this is our oldest daughter and she loves you and all this kind of stuff. And, and we really didn't know what we were going to do. But what really amazed us was that everybody in our church and in our neighborhood just loved us. They just loved her. They, there was never a single word about, you know, oh, I thought you were good parents. Oh, I thought da-da-da. It was all about... Uh, 
that's okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to make it through through this. We're going to do this together. She's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. We're going to stick it out together. And God really, uh, even today, yeah. the people in our church uh, have never, ever been condemning or, or, or judgmental. And, and it really... It really helped, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, so yeah. I mean, I think probably the hardest thing for us has been uh, uh, difficulties with, with our children. Uh, our oldest daughter was, you know, she just went through some really difficult issues, and and uh, the pastors that supported us, n none of them ever said, you know, brother, you know, you're not taking care of your own family. Blah blah blah. You don't. You shouldn't be on the field. They just loved us and supported us, and and uh, it, it really showed us the grace of God. And uh, and just recently, with our youngest daughter Esther, uh, she she just contracted epilepsy through some. We we have no idea, and and that's been that's been a real real battle. And. Uh, praying that God will either reveal what it is or, or heal her or both and uh, I mean she is so involved in the church and she is her life is so focused on the Lord and and yet these things happen and, and it's like you know uh, it'd be easy to, to second guess God or second guess yourself or, or something like that but you know I guess more than anything else our confidence is that you know, stuff happens, and but God mm -hmm. still loves us, and mm -hmm. and uh, the process that all this stuff puts us in leads us to a, a place where we're the kind of people that God can use even more, and uh, it sure teaches you to love and be humble. I'll say that, <laughs> you know. So surely there were times uh, on the field that you really felt like God was with you. Um, what are some of the stories where you felt like uh, you were doing the right thing? Yeah, we are, we live in a um, 1860 manor home, and it is huge. It's a castle. It's a castle. And some people are like, you're a missionary, you live in a castle? But anyway, we do. But the purpose of that castle has been to help women that are in crisis. And we've been working on this for a long, long time, and, and there's been moments we thought, you know, Lord, what are we doing here? But about three years ago, we were seriously praying about the direction of the castle to, or the ladies that we would take in. And in a moment of prayer, God just came in and said, this is the ladies we want you to work with. This is what we want you to do. And as soon as that was settled, things began to fall into place. The finances, the, the women we were gonna hire to work for us. We want the house to be run by Scots. We are in Scotland. Yeah. We want it to be run by Scots and we want it to be owned by Scots. And as soon as that happened, it was it was there. Oh yeah. It was just like, okay, this is the purpose for the house. These are the people that are gonna help you. These are the people that are gonna help you raise funds for the house in Scotland. It was just like, thank you, Jesus. We've been waiting a long time for yeah. this. It's very true. It's like, <laughs> it's like I, I always say, it's the long road to suddenly in the land of never before. You just, it's just like all of a sudden this stuff all began to fall into place and, and you have these long periods of time where this, it's just like you just keep at it. I think one of the things we really learn as missionaries is that you just plod on. You just, you just stay steady. You just keep going. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like stuff begins to make sense. Stuff begins to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know we trying to get the house signed off was... Mm. A 15-year project, and I mean, it is amazing to me that people still supported us. It just took so long, and and I, I'm so grateful to them and to the Lord for for that. But it's like it's like something. Uh, this one guy left, another guy came in, and within six months, after waiting 15 years, we had our license. Mm. And then it was like everything that happened after that, up until just recently, uh, just. I mean, two weeks ago, we got our license. We're licensed by the uh, care inspector there in Scotland uh, to uh, open as a government-sponsored care facility. And so, uh, really, really, it was, it was amazing. I, I think, and um, you know, and in people's lives, uh, just looking at the people in our church and this one particular lady, Marion. Who, when we when we first met Marion, 
uh, she, she, she was totally not saved and had one of the worst reputations in our whole town. And, and, uh, but to see her transformation over the years, she's battled through cancer, she's battled through all kinds of, of illnesses and stuff. And yet, just two Sundays ago, she's up giving her testimony in, in church. And mm -hmm. for, for me, that, that was just so amazing that she has come so far. And, uh, and there's, there's been a lot of those ki kinds of things. And uh, in the end, it really is all, all about the people, you know, because the, the house is a beautiful house, but it's a beautiful tool. Without people, it, it is worth nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for, for us, our, our best stories are the people that God has uh, put in our lives, and we've got to see, see them change and grow in the Lord. And, that makes it worth it all, mm. you know. Mm. That, that really makes so to see these kids grow up from from a two year old to twenty four year old and and be testifying out on the street and mm. and those kinds of things is I mean that's worth it, you know. We have started a prayer meeting, and I'm trying to teach some of the folks in my church how to intercede and in deeper prayer than just Lord, will you help me today or give me money for the week or whatever. And at one of these meetings, uh, Ricky was um, praying and all of a sudden he said, I can hear, I can hear. And we're like, what? He goes, I'm taking my hearing aids out. I can hear. And we're like, that's so awesome. And God, with, we weren't even praying for Ricky to hear. We weren't praying for anything like that. And the Holy Spirit just healed his hearing right on the spot. And he testified in church the next week and he's still, he says, well, I guess now I can't tell my wife I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know Ricky, you gotta stop that now. <laughs> But it was so cool that, that God just miraculously healed him just in a regular prayer meeting, and we were yeah. just so excited. Yeah, and it just made it just made such a difference for the church that things are happening. And he's know? changed so he much. He has too. changed, and he just in the last two years he's like, I'm going to follow Jesus. Yeah. And now he's testifying in church. He's reading his Bible. He's sending us text messages of Bible things he's reading in the Bible. Mm. And it's just awesome to see him growing up. It it's is. just growing in the Lord, not yeah. growing up, but growing in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. he's an awesome guy. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. pretty amazing. I think one of the biggest things that Bob and I went through, we were brand new on the mission field, like six months, not even six months on the mission field. And... Um, something happened through another missionary that caused us to break trust with yeah. each other. Mm. And, um, you know, we're all alone in Japan. There's not a lot of way to contact people. And it really crushed us. So we probably together went through maybe a two year period of being depressed and both of us at the same time. Mm -hmm and really discouraged and wondering what we were going to do. We didn't have anybody to talk to. We didn't have any way through it. And for some reason, um, Bob went to the States yeah. before I did and yeah. brought the kids later and um, ended up seeing a movie. Yeah. Can you remember the, the movie? City Slickers. City Slickers, yeah. So he's, he called me and he said, this movie will make it right for us. I'm yeah. like, okay. Now, I make you feel trapped. No, you don't. It's not you. <clears throat> well, how do you think that makes me feel when I hear you say that? I didn't mean you. It's me. I... I just feel lost. Kim was telling me about this cattle drive thing. Oh. Maybe you should go. What about Florida? You'll be miserable in Florida. You'll make me miserable. You hate my parents. No, I don't hate your oh, parents. come on, Mitch. You have known my father since you were 18 years old, and you've never called him by his name. What is his name? It's a joke. I was just joking. Look, I said I'm going to go, and I'm going to go. You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's all right if you don't want to come with us. I'm saying I don't want you to come. Go away with Ed. Take Phil. I am giving you these two weeks. It's my present. Go and find your smile. What if I can't? We'll jump off that bridge when we come to it. 
so I got to the States and we went to the movie and walked out. We both just cried and yeah. cried and cried and said, yeah, that's yeah. the healing moment for us. Yeah. You know, and from that point, we, we worked through it and, yeah. and we were better. And, yeah. and, you know, we have lived on the mission field for a long time. And most of the time we don't have. Um, people to help us. Yeah. So we've learned to trust each other and trust yeah. the Lord and and uh, just to work together. That's, you know? tr that's true. And I, th I think one of the things too that, that a lot of missionaries don't talk about is that one of the main reasons, actually the number one reason missionaries leave the field is other missionaries. And and we can be really difficult people sometimes, you know, but but uh, humility and grace is all par part of God's process. And, and uh, you know, I, I guess if I could you know, uh, help another missionary to understand that you'll get through it through this. Just stick it out. Don't don't quit. Yeah. It's sometimes it's one of the most amazing lives that a person can live, and I wouldn't yeah. trade anything Absolutely. for what we do. But there's definitely times when when sometimes it's just you and you. <laughs> It's just, you know, and sometimes even God is quiet, and, and it's it's through those times that the process of depth begins to really work in our lives, mm -hmm. and, and we find out He really is everything that we need, and that He who called us is able to complete us. He's able to see us through mm -hmm. uh, till we fulfill His call, and, and, uh, and so... Uh, you know, I mean, I love what I do. Uh, I love people. I love I love my wife a whole lot, <laughs> a whole whole lot more than uh, and, and more than that, I like her a lot. And uh, so, you know, two missionaries don't talk a lot about their their, their marriage problems or their uh, family problems and stuff. But but we all have those things. We we all deal with those things. And 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 uh, if we'll stay the course and. Uh, God put us with the right people. I mean, God has always put people in our lives when, when we really needed it. And, but He's also proved Himself to us as well. It is, it is true. Missionaries are just people too. And so we all That's go right. through uh, struggles. And, uh, but it's, it's great to hear the, the ups and the downs that yep. you guys go through. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed hearing uh, their, sh uh, their testimony and uh, some of their story. And uh, how can people find out more about you guys? Uh, you can find us on uh, yeah. Facebook, yeah. Uh, Bob Hill, I think. And, or you can find us through Globe International. Uh, and, or you can go to, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. So if you'd like to get some more information, uh, there's some uh, links on the screen. Uh, so until then, for Missionary Stories, I'm Ian with Bob and Melissa Hill. See you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, as you probably noticed, there's so many gnats and flies here. Uh, we're out in the, someplace in Alabama. And uh, so this is like a smoke ring to keep the bugs away. And it's, it's really effective right here. <laughs> That's right. Right here. This is where it works. Every place else is like, they're going like, dude, don't go over there. Just stay around the people. Yeah, so.